Hi, I'm Kevin Elizabeth, and I'm a wedding photographer based in San Diego, serving worldwide. And I'm also the author of A Bride's Guide to a Picture Perfect Wedding. So I wanted to do a video about my process with this book. I get a lot of questions every single week. How did I write a book? How did I do it? How did I make it happen? It looks like you're doing all these different things. How do you have the time? And I'm gonna be talking about all of those things today to help any of you who might be interested in writing a book. And I promise you, while it is a stressful process, it is not quite as daunting as it might seem. I have been blogging tips for brides and grooms for many, many years. And there came a point where I thought to myself, why don't I turn some of this content into a book and expand upon it and kind of give couples a better and bigger resource for planning their wedding in a way that's going to help them have better wedding photos. So I'm kind of a believer that the success of wedding photos are 80% on the photographer's skill and their ability to handle any kind of situation and be creative, but then 20% on the couple. So that is them trusting the photographer, them listening to the photographer, being open, giving them their best attitude and kind of being great team players, as well as making sure that they're giving their photographer the things that they need to produce their best work. So for example, choosing a better room to get ready in and not a dark dungeon of a venue. So some of those things are really, really helpful for the photographer and I've included those in my book. Um, but so basically I was writing these tips on my blog. I wanted to turn it into a book. And so what I thought about was how am I going to do this? How am I going to structure this? Um, and you don't want to get too far deep in the beginning because you will overwhelm yourself and you will just stop. So what I said to myself was, okay, I'm just going to start with an outline. I'm going to figure out the things that I want to discuss and then go from there. My whole philosophy is to take everything one step at a time and spread it out if you have to. Make things manageable for yourself so that they do not get overwhelming. If I get overwhelmed, I tend to just shut down and not want to do something. So I have to find ways for myself to do things at a pace that doesn't stress me out, but that also gets the job done. So I wrote my outline. I kind of thought about all the different chapters I wanted to discuss, how I wanted to go about it. For my book, I chose to go in what was a very um, sensible way of going through the planning process. So choosing the photographer to the engagement session, to wedding planning, to wedding day, to after the wedding. And I broke it down into several chapters from there. So I had this outline. So what did I start doing next? So what I started doing was gathering resources that I had already written, which for you might be blogs, it might be email templates, or even just articles you've written for other people. So I started to gather these different sub chapter ideas to figure out what I wanted to discuss in each chapter. Now I did have some of this content already written, but it did have to be revised to fit in a book and not quite so much for my blog. I wanted it to be a little bit more polished, a little bit more formal, and also change up the sentence structure a little bit. So I started doing that and this was really over the course of a couple of months. Um, I mean, I started this book several years ago and I just took it really slowly for a long time. So after I developed these sub content ideas, what I started doing was focusing on writing one chapter a month. And the reason I took it so slow was because right before we moved to San Diego, I started this book. So once we moved here, I knew that I had to build my business from the ground up in an entirely new market. So for me, it was more important for me to invest time in building my business, getting clients, meeting vendors, that sort of thing, and then putting the book sort of like on the side. So I would dedicate about a day or two, a month to it, and write that one chapter, and that was it. And then the next month, I would move on to the next chapter. So I did that for a really long time. Some months I would do two, some months I wouldn't do any because I was just busy and didn't feel like it. So I kind of took it really slow because no one was breathing down my neck to get it done. There wasn't any pressure. I felt like I could do this in a very digestible way for me that was gonna be good for me and good for my business. So once I had kind of written the entire book, what I did then was I started editing a chapter a week, sometimes a chapter a month. And I took that really slowly again because I was still building up my business at this point in San Diego. So I focused more on that rather than the book. Now, once I was done editing the chapters on my own. I actually had a professional editor look over the book for more grammatical type things. I hired them on Readsy. It's a great resource for authors to find editors, to find designers, publishers, all sorts of things. 
So I really recommend that site. I will link it down below. Um, and that's pretty much what I use for most of my book resources. Now, after I had the professional comb through and edit it, what I did was I sent it to a wedding planner that I knew, I sent it to a past bride, and I also had my fiance read it. So I had three different kinds of people reading this book so that they could give me their perspective on the content. So the planner came back and she said, oh, I think you need to add a section here about this and this and this. And then my fiance added more content ideas for me to kind of expand upon different ideas. And then the past bride that I had read it, she was able to give me her perspective as a newly married person reading this book and she said, I think you need to add this and change this. So I kind of took these different perspectives and used it to help me edit the book and refine it and get it to a better place. Now once I thought I was done editing it, I went back and I edited it again and again and again and again. I've read this book so many times, I probably have most of it memorized at this point. So that might happen with you and I recommend doing more drafts than you think is necessary, have more eyes read it than you think you should. It's just better if your book is more heavily combed through and more edited. So yes, it takes time. Yes, it is annoying. I will not lie. I got very tired of reading this after the 50th time, but it was very necessary. And if I hadn't done that, my book would not be in the place where it is at today. So I'm really happy that I had people in my life pushing me to do that. And I would recommend that you also do it as well. Now, when it came time for the imagery of the book and not just the written copy, I actually have it a little bit easier because since I'm a photographer, I own all the rights to every single image in this book. Now, if you're not a photographer, you will either have to license images through a stock company or through a photographer. And that can get really expensive. If you can ever barter with a photographer for licenses, that might be a good idea if you are short on cash. Um, now, obviously, Obviously, if you're more writing a novel or something that doesn't need photos, it's not a big deal, but I have a lot of images in my book. I am a photographer. I want to show my work. So my work is almost half words and half photos, and that was very intentional. But again, for me, it was quite easy to do that because I did not have to pay other people to use their images. I just went out and shot my own photos or used photos that were in my archives. Um, now, one of the things that I did have to do is I had to produce a photo shoot to get specific content for my book that I wanted to use not only on the cover and the back cover, but also throughout the book. So I have different, basically chapter intros. And so this photo shoot is actually from the photo shoot that I did on the cover. So what I did was I organized this shoot with the help of a couple of amazing vendors who I will link down below, and they helped put on this beautiful photo shoot that fit my branding and also gave me the content that I needed to fill out those chapter intros so that each one would be really cohesive and that they would all match really well and kind of flow through the book, whereas the rest of the photos were just pulled from different weddings and editorials. So that was something that I did to give me very specific content and exactly what I needed. I knew I need this sort of image to intro this chapter. I knew this. So going into the shoot, I had a list of shots that I needed to get in order to have options for the cover and those chapter intros and a couple of other miscellaneous pages. So if you are looking to do that sort of thing, I recommend doing it sooner rather than later. Find a photographer who has a style that really matches your brand and your aesthetic and gives you the sort of look that you're going for for your book, whether it be on the cover or throughout the pages. Now you certainly don't have to use as many images as I did. I work in the wedding field, it's very visual. I'm a photographer, that's super visual. So if you're in a different field, you might not need as many photos, so it might not be as expensive or costly for you to license images to use, or maybe you are a photographer and then you're just super lucky and can use your own work. Now what came next was designing the actual layout of the book. So I can just show you guys a little bit of what that was like. So I basically have some images that are full spreads and then I have a mix of copy and words throughout the whole thing. I am not an expert in design. I can do photos and I can write, but I do not know how to use InDesign. So for me to have purchased the program, taken the time to learn it, and then to create something that actually looked really pretty, 
That just wasn't gonna happen or it was gonna take me a really long time and to dedicate days and days and days to it, which is time that I don't always have as a wedding photographer in San Diego. I'm busy all year round. So I decided to hire someone through Reedsy. His name was Adam Hay and he absolutely nailed my design. I sent him inspiration of what I liked. I told him about my brand, about who I wanted to reach with my book. He designed an initial draft for me. We made a few small tweaks and then he went from there and absolutely nailed it. It was an amazing process for me. Um, never have I had somebody design something that was so perfect from the get-go. So that was absolutely incredible. And I had this beautiful design that spoke to my brand, spoke to who I am, and spoke to the brides and grooms that I am trying to reach with this book. So for me, that was a no-brainer to invest that money to have a more beautiful product. Now, there are certain things that I think, yes, you can or you should do on your own. You can save money. You might be able to do them better. But there are other things where I think outsourcing makes a lot of sense. Um, if you are someone who is not going to be good at a part of your book, then you should invest in somebody who is going to do that well for you because the better your work looks, the better your product will sell and the better reflection of you it is. So that's something I think is really important. Outsource where you need it, do it yourself where you can and where you can do a good enough job that you are proud of. What I did to find a book printer who could print my book because yes, I am going the self-published route. Um, that was a decision that I made that I thought was going to be best for me. I wanted the creative control. I wanted more margins and I wanted to just be able to do it myself and in the time that I wanted to do it with the creativity that I wanted. So I had to find a printer and I started looking at books in my house that I liked. Books that had images. I looked at their quality. I looked at the way the paper felt, how the cover was, everything about it. And so what I did was I started contacting some of the authors and some of the publishers of that book and said, hey, where did you get this? This book printed I really love it I'm printing a book of my own and I was lucky enough to have someone reach out to me and tell me where they had their books printed so I had my books printed through Friesen's up in Canada um, the exchange rate was actually really good for me being in the US so I had them print the books now the downside with using a printer like that is that you are going to have to buy those books in a large quantity and house it yourself or store it somewhere so that is a downside you do have to invest more up front but on the flip side compared to a print on demand service, you will make higher margins because print on demand books take a much higher cut from you because they're not doing bulk printing all at once. They are just print on demand. So yes, you're gonna have to pay more for your books, but you will have higher margins when those books sell. So I had my books printed and they came in. I had to order several hundred of them to get a nice price discount. So that was something that was fine for me. Now, as far as selling the book itself, um, a lot of people ask me, where are you selling them? And right now I am mostly selling them on Amazon. Um, and I will link that book below if you guys wanna check it out. I highly recommend it, it's a great book. But basically I sell through Amazon FBA, which stands for Fulfilled by Amazon. And how that works is that you sign up for an account Honestly, it's kind of complicated. I recommend Googling and watching videos to figure it all out because there are certain steps in there that you do not want to get wrong. Um, so basically what I had to do was I had to make an account and then I had to fill out my book and then also put in its ISBN number, which I was able to purchase through a site called My Identifiers. That is where you can get your ISBN numbers in the US. Um, you should really have one, at least for a printed book, you've got to have one unless you're just selling it out of your home to people that you meet. So I got my ISBN number plugged in there. I had my cover image, the description, all these different things into my FBA. I had the book go live for sale. And what happens is I ship books directly from my printer to Amazon. I also had some come here just for like longer term storage. But the books that I sent to Amazon are now in the Amazon FBA warehouse. So anytime someone orders my book on Amazon, Amazon handles shipping it out, packaging it, all those sorts of things. They handle customers customer service, so if something gets messed up in shipping, they deal with it, not me, which is great because I can't always be dealing with it. I travel a lot. So to have a service that, yes, they do take a cut from you, but they're doing all the heavy lifting for you, you save a lot of time and you save a lot of stress and headache and they deal with the customers and you don't have to. Um, so that is what I have been doing. It's been working out well for me. I'm also getting my book in some local stores and I'm going to be reaching out to even more larger stores that are more specific to the wedding industry soon. Um, I think 
think if you can get yourself in a niche bookstore or a niche store in general that really suits your book, that's going to be a really great match for you. For me personally, I'm not very concerned about getting my book into physical Barnes and Noble stores. Um, it's such a very niche book. It is a book for couples about wedding photography. So to me, I felt like it was going to be just a tiny fish in the sea in a large store, whereas online and Amazon, for example, if anybody's searching anything related to that type of book, like a wedding planning book or a wedding photography book, it's going to pop right up. They're not having to go through the aisles of the books and only see a little tiny spine. Um, so for me, that's just what worked best. So I enjoy it uh, basically after I've sold a set amount of books and hit a set amount of income, Amazon will write me a check or send it direct deposit to my bank account and I just go in the reports, I see what's been happening and that sort of thing. I also work on getting reviews from Amazon. So if you have bought my book on Amazon, I would love for you to review it. Super, super helpful. So collecting reviews is really, really great to boost product sales and give customers the feeling that they can trust your product and to show them what it's all about and what people think about it. But anyways, that is it for how I wrote my book and what my process was like. Yes, it was kind of stressful. There were times where the printing mishaps really got me down, but I just pushed through it and ultimately I think I have a much better product than I could have ever dreamed of. I love this book. I put my heart and soul into it. And if you are a vendor or a bride and groom or just someone who's interested in seeing what this is like, please go buy the book. I would love it. I totally appreciate your support. I will again link it down below where you can go grab it. Um, you can use it to give you inspiration for your own book if that's something you're interested in doing and best of luck to you.